carries could be? Obviously in the pit and fissure or on the smooth surface. Which one is more likely to happen? Pit and fissure. So pit and fissure carries are the highest prevalence of dental caries. They're a more common one. The second comes, <coughs> and then I guess it says smooth surface caries are the second most. I mean, there's only two of these options, like either pit and fissure and then smooth surface, right? <coughs> Unless you want to look at cusp tip, but. But the smooth surface caries need, for, for that to happen, they need a bacteria that's able to stick on the tooth, right? And pit and fissure caries doesn't really need that. So streptococci species have special receptors for adhesion so that they could first begin to adhere to the tooth surface. Now the pellicle on the tooth surface, what charge is that? The proteins, it's negative. And what's the bacteria? Negative. Right, so there's, they use different methods to attract, but one of the methods is calcium. So calcium bridging is a way that they could actually attract. So calcium is two positives, and a calcium bridge between the bacteria and the enamel or the pellicle is a, a method of initial adhesion that the bacteria comes toward the tooth. Now the tooth, the, the bacteria again is getting S mutants. You know, you're eating fermentable carbohydrates, right? And S mutants has by byproducts, like, like us. When we eat, we have byproducts. S mutants has byproducts as well, which is acidic, lactic acid. We make urea, uric acid, and S mutants makes lactic acid when it eats. So naturally, it's gonna to start to lower the pH in that area until it gets to less than 5.5, and that's when demineralization starts to happen, loss of calcium and phosphate ions. Now there could be more S mutants and making all that sticky substances so that they're stuck to the smooth surface and more difficult to be removed just from saliva. So you need to floss and brush to actually get them off. <coughs> so streptococci species produce dextran-like extracellular long chain polysaccharides, which basically means polysaccharides, this sticky, um, sugary stuff. Okay, these polysaccharides extrude from the bacteria and stick to the tooth and makes it more resistant to mechanical forces and to the saliva, so it's not easily washed away. So for smooth surface caries to happen, a bacteria has to be able to make these polysaccharides. Okay, well let's look at another thing from another point of view. So in order for the microorganism to create smooth surface caries, it has to be able to make polysaccharides. And the way it does it is, when it eats the fermental carbohydrates, it wants to make these dextran-like polysaccharides. But it needs an enzyme to do that, and the enzyme is called glu glucosyl transferase. So it uses this enzyme to make polysaccharides. All right, so it uses, it has this weird transferring to sugar weird enzyme that makes it sugar. That's basically it, right? So when we give fluoride, one of the other things that fluoride does other than just, you know, making fluoro appetite, is it actually blocks glucosyl transferase. And that prevents S mutants from making its polysaccharides. This is why we say fluoride is better at preventing smooth surface caries, right? And we use sealants to prevent pit and fissure sealants. We, d we don't say fluoride is you know, super awesome at preventing pit and fissure caries. We say it's really awesome at smooth surface caries. That's its highest preventive. It's, this is one of the reasons, right? Because it's preventing the stickiness of the bacteria to the enamel. <coughs> So they are effective and mainly in smooth surface caries. Another thing to know is xylitol is a natural sugar, a different type of sugar, but it's a natural sweetener, if you want to call it, um, a type of 
alcoholic sugar, but is a non-fermentable sugar. Non so fermentation basically, basically is a way that the bacteria uses to ferment the product and make its nutrients from it, but it's non-fermentable. So when you take xylitol instead of you know, regular sugar, then the bacteria will take the xylitol up, but it's not able to ferment it, so it can't, it can't do its work, you see? So xylitol is a non-fermentable sugar that keeps sucrose molecules from binding with strep mutants. So there's some competitive inhibition. Once the bacteria gets the xylitol, it can't ferment it, but it also can accept more sugar because it's already, all its receptors are taken up by the xylitol. You see, so xylitol actually is anti-cardiogenic, which is good. It's a sweetener that could actually um, lower the risk of caries, but it's expensive. Right? So, so sugar is easier to get to use. And doesn't probably doesn't taste as good, but you know, it's healthier. All right. And that will prevent the bacteria from making its polysaccharides and lowering the pH.